Organizations like the Israeli Mossad have great capabilities and could very well make sure that Putin is no more, Russian political commentator Yevgeny Kiselyov reported. At the same time, the journalist added that they will not be allowed to do this since Western politicians are afraid that someone worse could come to power in the Russian Federation to replace Putin. The political commentator explained why those who have the ability to eliminate Putin have not done so yet. I believe that the Israeli intelligence service Mossad is capable of much, but then big politics begins and I suspect that it is not in the interests of Israel and not in the interests of many other countries. No matter how much someone would like it, no one will engage in such projects. I think that in fact this topic has already been analyzed many times and the conclusion has been reached that it is better not to. Why? This is another question. There is an assumption that one of the main reasons why the West is providing insufficient assistance to Ukraine is the fear that in the event of a military defeat or a series of painful failures, the Putin regime will begin to crumble and some scumbag, ten times worse than Putin, will come to power, explained Yevgeny Kiselyov. Earlier, Yevgeny Kiselyov said that Putin's elite is a source of threat to Putin. Believe me, all these people, at least many of those who are on various proscription lists in the West, are under sanctions, are afraid of being sanctioned or have simply kept their mouths shut. They hate Putin, Yevgeny Kiselyov said. I continue to periodically have the pleasure of communicating with these people and I see that the level of hatred towards Putin, even among those who formerly do not participate in anything and do not express any protests, is gradually increasing, Kiselyov noted. Naturally, this gives hope that at some point the lid of the cauldron will be blown off. At the same time, the journalist emphasized that we may have to wait a very long time until the patience of Russians finally runs out. Sometimes, looking at what is happening in Russia, I think, what kind of super strong steel is this boiler made of and where is the limit of the patience of an ordinary citizen who is constantly deprived of something and forced to eat the completely inedible chewing gum of Russian propaganda? Alas, I may not be able to understand this, Kiselyov said. Some 5,426 Russian soldiers were killed and 10,958 others were wounded in the Kharkiv front sector between May the 10th and September the 21st, the operational and tactical grouping of troops Kharkiv reported on Telegram. For comparison, the Western Coalition of the United States, the United Kingdom, Canada, France, Germany, Italy and other countries lost a total of 3,500 military personnel killed in more than 20 years of the war in Afghanistan in 2001 to 2021, including 2,400 Americans. This is half of what Russia irretrievably lost in four months in Ukraine's Kharkiv Oblast alone. According to NV media outlet, in the same period, Ukrainian forces targeted 143 enemy tanks in the sector, destroying 69 of them. 77 Russian armored combat vehicles were damaged and 134 destroyed. In total, 1,464 enemy vehicles were damaged or destroyed, along with 762 artillery systems, 212 of which were destroyed. In addition, 4,458 UAVs of various types and 152 enemy ammunition depots were eliminated. Russia launched a new offensive on May the 10th in northern Kharkiv Oblast in a push that involved as many as 30,000 troops, according to a Ukrainian official. Russian forces have so far advanced less than 10 kilometers into Ukrainian territory and have not managed to seize control of Vovchansk a city with a pre-2022 population of around 17,000. The increase in losses is connected to Russia opening its new front in the Kharkiv region while maintaining the same pressure rate over the entire 1,000-kilometer front line in the east and south of Ukraine. Although this new approach has increased pressure on the front lines, an effective Ukrainian defense and a lack of Russian training reduces Russia's ability to exploit any tactical successes despite attempting to stretch the front line further. The Russians have lost most of their 138th motorized rifle brigade in the war-torn city of Vovchansk with their 83rd and 157th tank regiments suffering considerable losses.
Russia's 83rd Air Assault Brigade is also constantly suffering losses, sometimes several dozen people a day, which is confirmed by both prisoners of war and radio intercepts. The Russian military command is compelled to withdraw units from other areas, deploy reserves. At the same time, Ukraine's defense forces stressed that Russian troops still have a fairly serious offensive potential. They are regrouping, restoring their forces and logistics, and training assault groups in the rear.